Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up uh, first, uh, we've got some uh, uh, illuminated areas here on the hazardous weather graphic, starting with the red, which is the warning areas that you see up there. That's our flood warnings uh, for uh, three rivers specifically. The uh, Salsa River is a flood warning out and Good Pasture River and the Little Chena, all three are expected to flood uh, overnight tonight and possibly into early tomorrow morning due to uh, one to two inches of rain that has recently fallen in those areas along over the uh, river basins of all three rivers and another possible uh, inch or so before it really tapers off later tonight and also here in the Alaska Range that's a flood watch out for all the rivers and streams in the Alaska Range, especially on the east side here and that's out until midday Saturday for possible flooding in those areas as another inch of rain also may fall in that area. And then around that, we've got uh, wind advisories out, uh, which includes the greater Fairbanks area for guess 35 miles an hour and uh, 40 mile country, upper Tanaw Valley, looking at uh, winds gusting to 40 miles an hour. And that's through midnight tonight, uh, already starting to kick up to those levels there and also back up into the Yukon Flats. Look for gusts of 40 miles an hour until midnight tonight. And moving on to fire danger. High up here over the upper Yukon Valley and Porcupine River right up uh, to the southern slopes of the Eastern Brooks Range. Looks like into the Koyukuk Valley a little bit there. Also uh, northern, northeastern Bristol Bay, uh, King Salmon, Igigik up around to including Dillingham and just west of Iliamna Lake and also along the Alaska range, or the Aleutian Range. Uh, Alaska Range ends a little farther to the north. And then Kodiak Island here, high fire dangers as well. In fact, it's uh, Kodiak State Airport today, or this afternoon at 3 p.m., hit 86 degrees, which ties their all-time record high of 86 degrees. It was set back in 1953. I don't recall the month, uh, what was either June, July, or August. Anyway, that's uh, at least tied as of 3 p.m. They may break the all-time record here. We'll have to wait and see if they hit 87 or not. But still, that's about the, I believe, the eighth day this summer that Kodiak at the state airport there has exceeded, has, has equaled or exceeded 80 degrees uh, this summer here with, uh, of course, one day occurring in uh, July, there around the 4th of 83, and then the other seven occurring this month. Also, we've got extreme fire danger here over the uh, central Kenai Peninsula around uh, where, again, today temperatures in the lower to mid 80s along Kenai Lake and over the Kenai Peninsula there. And actually, down into Seward, they were in the lower 80s this afternoon with uh, gusty north winds. Extreme fire dangers to Sitna Valley, Big Lake on up toward Trapper Creek, and then it tapers off considerably, uh, dropping to nothing, of course, with the, uh, all the rain up into the Alaska Range. And then areas of high fire danger to very high, extending in the Copper River Basin. That moisture cutting off along or just north of the uh, Alaska Range there, but uh, definitely cloudier, cooler temperatures moving into the area there. And you can probably get some rain overnight tonight in the Copper River Basin. And then we've got some uh, high fire danger lingering there over the, uh, looks like the upper Klondike Highway, Haines towards uh, Skagway. And moving on to satellite imagery, we've got a frontal boundary right through the uh, central interior, an upper level system back here to the northwest. That's uh, kind of coming over the top of a big area, high pressure here, very warm air aloft associated with it, 32 degrees, for example, over Kodiak Island, or Kodiak and Bristol Bay, occurred at 16,000 feet, uh, which is uh, really high here, even for this area, any time of the year. And uh, in fact, it, that's high even areas to the south, 16,000 foot freezing levels, west coast California, those are about as high as they get. And so uh, that helped uh, push that temperature up to 86 degrees today at Kodiak with those northwest winds, downsloping winds there. And then some passing clouds here to the east and the rainfall here right over the central interior areas uh, 
with uh, Fort, Rain, Fort Rain Wainwright <laughs> picked up three quarters of an inch of precipitation during the day today. That's a 12 hour amount, as well as Delta Junction. Uh, Denali Park had a little over an inch in Chattanooga, a little over an inch and a tenth of precipitation with uh, up to half an inch falling over toward North and Northway and Toke and much lighter amounts to the south there. Uh, some moisture did get into the Yakutat area today, some showers, they had about a hundredth of an inch so far and clouds across the southeast coast today and that's going to start developing into a showery and rain situation here with this moisture uh, starts getting organized off to the west there and swings in and some really lighter amounts of moisture. All the heavy stuff was here with the central and eastern interior. This is much lighter, just a few hundredths of an inch to maybe a tenth of an inch occurring. Uh, just cloudy along the Arctic coast. Fog earlier today uh, pretty much lifted over the entire area. And this uh, frontal boundary here right up against that strong area high pressure that's just to the east here, and that's gonna pretty much stay out there. I'll try to make a jog to the east here tonight, and then it's gonna get shoved back to the west by Sunday. Uh, with easterly flow developing across the uh, southern Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And rolling this again, you can see the south to north flow here taking a turn to the east as it comes over the top of the ridge and westerly flow, bringing clouds into the St. Lawrence Island area. Really not much in the way of any precipitation. Again, really light through here and uh, of course much heavier or is more uh, upper support and dynamics. Up, cold upper low here pushing southward or bring much colder temperatures into the Copper River Basin and eastern interior as well uh, through the weekend and into the first of next week. On the chart today, there's that frontal boundary which uh, really uh, uh, divided the state between the sunny and warm to hot temperatures to the south. Much cooler, much wetter, much cloudier to the north, although there was some clearing occurring over the north slope uh, eastward into the Brooks Range there with the precipitation shifting southward with the front here. Heaviest as I mentioned over the eastern interior, lighter, more scattered back to the west, but still a lot of clouds here over the Bering Sea. And uh, 30, 40 mile an hour wind gusts over the central Aleutians here with this uh, just in advance of that frontal boundary there with some rain. Not too particularly heavy there, but uh, definitely measurable around ADAC, uh, not so much for Atka. Strong high pressure here just uh, north of the Alaska Peninsula, 1,035 millibars. Lots of clear skies here, sunny skies, eastern Aleutians on Alaska, Nikolsky. Much of the Alaska Peninsula into Kodiak Island there with a trough off to your east and southeast, northwest winds and uh, taking very warm air aloft, warming it as it comes down slopes uh, off the mountains there and uh, into the mid-80s or maybe even higher in some areas. And the southeast coast, uh, low clouds and fog along and off the coast there. Uh, Sitka had some fog today but nothing too dense. Generally a cloudy day there for the panhandle. And we'll see for tonight, uh, chance of rain increases there for the uh, mainly over the northern areas, an increasing chance of showers here to the south. And then rain will diminish here over the uh, central Tanah Valley, 40 mile country, but will linger, but will be slow to diminish. And uh, the farther east you are, but definitely lighter winds as well, although pretty good gradient here, could see gusts 30 miles an hour uh, through the passes of the Alaska Range. But those wind advisories end at midnight tonight for the remainder of the area. And then another trough here keeps it unsettled over the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Dry back to the west, high pressure, 1,043 millibar high center there, ridging southward across the eastern Bering Sea and along the coast, all the way into the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula. And that feature will keep this system out to the west. And for Saturday, it actually starts to edge back to the west a little bit there with the rain. Sunshine takes over, just some lingering showers by afternoon, not much left of the precipitation, all shifting off into Canada. Sunny over the northern panhandle, rain in the south, and chance of rain and snow showers up over the uh, eastern Brooks Range of the eastern Arctic coast. And the outlook for Sunday looks like uh, some scattered showers lingering here with an upper level disturbance coming southward, but mostly sunny for the panhandle, dry even down to the south in the afternoon. Sunshine again, Kodiak Island, all the way up to the north slope. Low temperatures for tonight, lower 30s, Brooks Range, upper 30s, mid to upper 30s, eastern Arctic coast, 50s in the panhandle, lower 50s, Bristol Bay highs tomorrow. 70, 75, Bristol Bay, 75 or so here, South Central Alaska, and uh, 60s in the Panhandle. Lows the following morning, uh, dropping down uh, below, a little below the frost point there. That's Anatovic Pass, forecast low 31, 32 at Eagle, and 35 there in the Northway Toke area, upper 30s into the Fairbanks area, near 50 on the southwest coast, and the afternoon highs for Sunday, cooler. But still 65 to 75 Bristol Bay, mid 60s Kodiak Island, near 70 up in the Susitna Valley, Kenai Peninsula, 55 to 60 in the interior.
And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic Saturday morning. Uh, expect IFR here for the Bering Sea from the south coast of St. Lawrence Island all the way down across the entire Aleutian chain into the Alaska Peninsula. Marginal VFR south side of the peninsula, IFR into almost to the uh, east side of Bristol Bay here, but then uh, VFR, Kodiak Island, south central Alaska, marginal VFR, uh, Wrangell Mountains, eastern Copper River Basin, up along the eastern, or er, following the Alaska Range here into the uh, Kuskokwim Valley, then VFR central interior, IFR, eastern and central north slope, and the Arctic coast as well, and solid IFR there across the southeast coast. In the afternoon, big improvement here, breaks out to VFR, except down south there, Hanging on to IFR throughout the day, uh, Dixon Entrance, uh, most of Prince of Wales Island, at least the southern portions there, Heidelberg, Annette, Metlakatla, Ketchikan, those areas over towards Stewart. And VFR, much of the interior, marginal VFR uh, for the eastern north slope, and some IFR right along, oh, say close to Barter Island, Kaktovik, otherwise VFR. And uh, marginal VFR just barely making it to the southwest coast here, otherwise no change over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And then for Sunday morning, good VFR again in the interior, IFR, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, VFR back to the west, most of the north slope and the Arctic coast, VFR, and uh, IFR retreating a little bit to the south here, a little farther south of St. Lawrence Island, Nunavak Island, just uh, barely into the marginal VFR zone, otherwise the coast looking really good to start the day Sunday, Kodiak Island, VFR, North Gulf Coast, same forecast, VFR, all of the panhandle. And then for uh, the afternoon, maybe a little bit of marginal VFR here over towards Stewart and Hyder, otherwise staying nice for the panhandle. And possibly some marginal VFR eastern, uh, actually on the south side of uh, the uh, Alaska Range there in the northeast Copper River Basin there, otherwise VFR in the interior. And uh, central Arctic coast, maybe IFR just grazing the coastline there, and uh, marginal VFR a little more extensive, but uh, the interior looking really good. Norton Sound, Seward Peninsula, Selwick Valley, Kotzebue, VFR, Nunavak Island, right on the edge, and so lots of IFR. Looks like uh, trying to break out to VFR maybe for uh, St. Paul Island, St. George Marginal. Otherwise, uh, not much change out over the Bering and the Aleutians. Passes, Anatuvik, IFR to start, becoming VFR uh, during the latter part of the morning. Same forecast and trend for Adigan as well. IFR trending toward VFR probably by noontime. And for Lake Clark and Merrow, marginal VFR to start. VFR in the uh, afternoon, through the afternoon, in the evening. Rainy, marginal VFR trending to VFR. Same forecast trend for Windy as well. Marginal becoming VFR. Isabel, same thing. Uh, lowest conditions early on. Better as the day progresses. And Mentasta, same trend. Marginal to VFR. Tanita, marginal VFR to VFR, pretty uniform forecast. So we can get to Portage, VFR the entire day. And for Chilkoot and White, IFR becoming VFR. For the freezing levels, uh, colder air, that northerly flow, as the higher pressure builds a loft out here over the Bering Sea, reestablishes back to the west here. 16,000 feet, Bristol Bay into Kodiak Island. And uh, quite a gradient here developing across the panhandle, uh, anywhere from 8 to 14,000 feet. Colder up here. <clears throat> down below 2,000 feet, eastern Brooks Range, eastern Arctic coast. And for icing, <coughs> excuse me, looking at uh, light, to light to isolated, uh, moderate rime icing, eastern Arctic coast, central coast as well, right up to the eastern Brooks Range, and then just grazing into the eastern interior there, otherwise the bulk over in Canada. No icing anywhere else expected, and moving on to the jet stream. Here's that high pressure aloft building farther to the west. You're going to have retrograding establishing itself over the Bering Sea, putting uh, central eastern interior into north-northwesterly flow. Definitely cooler air coming down with that over the next couple of days, all the way down to the Copper River Basin. And at 9,000 feet, uh, northerlies, 20 to 30 knots here. High pressure right along the southwest coast down across the Alaska Peninsula and uh, 20 to 30 knots, up to 45 knots, so across the panhandle, a little brisk there, and southerly 50 to 65 knots, western Bering Sea. Uh, lighter winds, same pattern here for at, night, at 3,000 feet, looks like 30 to 40 knot winds on the west side of this ridge, northerly 15 or 10 to 15 knots, except 20 to 30 on the eastern Arctic coast, up to 50 there for the panhandle. Turbulence, uh, 
Light to isolated moderate chop or considerable moderate chop northern Panhandle, southern Alaska, Kodiak Islands, central Aleutians. Welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service and joining us today, two more people to talk about the augmented reality sandbox. It's Alana Velaji. She's a University of Alaska Fairbanks mechanical engineering student, helped design and work on the details to make this new type of sandbox there. Thanks for joining us, Alana. <laughs> and Courtney Brees, she's the outreach coordinator for EPSCOR, which is the experimental program to stimulate mm -hmm. competitive research. It's a, a program funded nationally by the National Science Foundation, right? Yes. Okay. Alana, tell us about how you changed and adapted this version of the augmented reality sandbox. It's a really cool tool. So Gina approached us with three goals for this new version of the sandbox. Mm -hmm. They wanted it to be compact mm -hmm. in a light system that could travel around the state. Mm -hmm. They wanted it to be child oriented. Okay. So we designed the sandbox to have three different levels. Okay. It's pretty cool. You can yeah. have younger children. You can have high school kids. Uh -huh. um, I guess I should say high school teenagers. Sure. <laughs> And then we also designed it to be more marketable, user-friendly, so that this could be seen eventually in classrooms all over the place, all over the state. Okay. And you had a big hand in this, but this was a team approach, right? Definitely. It was a really good experience for myself, for George Stevens, who we'll see later. One of our hand models today. Yeah. For um, two other members who aren't here today, Cody Klingman and Austin Hunt. Uh -huh. And um, it was just a really good learning experience all around. Very good. And this is something that is part of your learning experience as well. So you get to check a box in your education. Yeah, right? it's a requirement for um, seniors of mechanical engineering at uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks. Very good. Very good. Well, it is a, is a wonderfully uh, inquisitive tool, fun to play with, and I hope to get my hands in the sand here in just a little bit. But it's also part of a bigger program, something that we were talking about a moment ago, EPSCOR, and that's what Courtney is here uh, to tell us more about. What is EPSCOR and why do you need a sandbox? Well, EPSCOR, as you mentioned, is a national uh, program. Mm -hmm. We're funded nationally, but we're actually located statewide. We're at UAF, we're mm -hmm. at UAA, we're in Southeast at UAS. And she mentioned, you know, taking the sandbox as an educational tool. And that's where our, I'm an outreach coordinator for the South Central Test Case. Okay. Our focus is on the Kenai watershed. Mm -hmm. And we are really interested in using these tools like the sandbox to interact with the students down there and get them interested in STEM and also communicate the research findings that we've been having throughout the state. Okay. And one of those, as uh, George and Eric are kind of changing the contours for us there from UAF to uh, maybe something that <laughs> resembles a little bit of something uh, more of the Kenai watershed, which is one of your focuses for the study, right? And, and specifically looking at some of the changes there and how that impacts people and also the salmon. Yes, it is a, all of our research is social mm -hmm. and environmental. Okay. So we have social scientists working hand in hand with our environmental scientists. One of the things we're studying is Upper Russian Lake, mm -hmm. and we have a researcher taking sediment cores from that lake. So one of the things we're going to use the sandbox to communicate is how the landscape changed over a long period of time, thousands of years, going from glacier, covered by glacier ice, mm -hmm. to being filled with water. And, then, and that's what they're doing right now, exactly. So live. They're, <laughs> exactly. That's so they're so moving cool. the water around. And then I think they've got some props over there because we're also going to go a little bit more in depth and explain how the salmon got there. Okay. So using there's these... there's the salmon. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I think there's a few more. <laughs> yeah, we so. like more salmon in Alaska. More salmon. Yeah, exactly. So it's really taking the findings from our research grant and just trying to connect with the community and translate it in a really hands-on and mm -hmm. exciting way so people can you know, interact with us as much as possible. Well, sure, that, that makes the learning and the science real and, and quite literally in your face rather than just some boring black and white paper that you have to read about. This is something that people can understand better because it's visual and they're touching and feeling and seeing these changes, right? Yeah, and get them engaged. And then mm -hmm. outreach is a huge component and working with the younger students and actually even, I mean, working with the UAF graduate mm -hmm. and uh, engineering students is it's a huge part of our grant and our we really enjoy it. Oh, it is wonderfully exciting. And so, Alana, you were telling us that this is built to travel. Right. And this is built to do more things in version one. Where can this type of project go in Alaska? And what can it demonstrate? I mean, we were hoping to eventually get to villages that were harder to reach. Mm -hmm. um, 
that you couldn't necessarily move a whole fixed instrument to, right? right. You need something that can pack up, fit in your truck bed. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, one of the, the most attractive parts of this project is that this was going to be something that was used past our, our graduation point. You know, this okay. is going to some, be something that lives in the state for years. Right, right. Well, it looks like you're well on your way with that. So what are, uh, give me another example. What else can this show us? We've talked about the, the Kenai River watershed. What's the coolest thing that you've played in the sand with? What, what's your idea? Well, I definitely enjoy the props, but we also like kind of building up a giant mound. And uh, if you put some water behind it, you can make a, a little... Uh, runway, I guess, and okay. you know, demonstrate the effects of the hydrology by just letting, kind of putting up a dam and letting it all pour right down. Okay. And so that could, I think you mentioned it earlier, you could even demonstrate the effects of a tsunami. Right. Or okay. something along those lines. So it's not just topography, but it's also hydrology yes. and coastal surge mapping and some of the coastal changes that we're seeing here in Alaska and seeing what the smaller changes in the sandbox might do to kind of a real effect of a slosh or a push of water up on the coast. Mm -hmm. uh, tsunami inundation mapping or even glacial dam release as, as some uh, has been demonstrated before. Yep. So, oh, wow, that's, you know, that's just an impressive thing. That it seems like the possibilities are nearly endless with this and probably even more ideas that are popping up in your head too. Yeah, as we speak. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, if folks want to get more information about EPSCOR, uh, you guys are online. You're on Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. Uh, A-K-E-P-S-C-O-R, right? EPSCOR. Uh, Alaska EPSCOR, that is. Mm -hmm. And again, you guys are funded by the National Science Foundation. Yes, so more to come from that and a, and a longer term study there. Thank you, ladies, uh, for joining us today. Uh, congratulations on your hard work there. This is really fun. And uh, for now, mm -hmm. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder uh, with this edition of Alaska Weather Facts, and I'm going to go play in the sandbox there. We'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at today's sea ice analysis. Uh, not some good, not really good shots here, but back toward uh, Wrangell Island there or to the northwest. And a little bit of a northward progression here, uh, way up here to the north. So it's a fair ways off the coast. And it looks like uh, over the next several days, this area here will shift southward a little bit with the uh, northerly winds expected over the cross that area there, but still remain well off the coast. And this area will actually probably continue to recede a little bit to the north. Coastal water forecast, gale warnings, north coast of the Panhandle tomorrow, 35 knot winds right out of the north, 8 to 9 foot seas. Even stronger winds there in Lynn Canal, sustained uh, 40 knots, storm force gusts of 55 knots, 8 foot seas, small craft advisory Stevens Passage, 30 knots out of the north, and Clarence Strait, much lighter by comparison, northwest of 15, and the south coast, lighter also by comparison, northwest 20, seas 8 feet. Outlook for Sunday. Small craft advisories here on the south coast, north to northwest, 25 to 30 knots, 11 to 13 foot seas, northeast 25 to 30 on the north coast. Gale warnings, down a little, but still gales for Lynn Canal, especially northern Lynn Canal, north at least 35 knots, 7 foot seas, north 25 Stevens Passage, northwest 20 for Clarence Strait. And for Prince William Sound, pretty windy tomorrow, north uh, 25 knots sustained with gale force gusts out of the north, uh, 35 knots, 6 foot seas, small craft advisories eastern north Gulf Coast, north 25, a little lighter here back to the west, north 20 knots, 7 foot seas, and then back into the gales for the Barren Islands there, 35 out of the northwest, 30 knots Clarence, or, uh, uh, for uh, Kamishak Bay, Cook Inlet, north winds 20 knots, seas 5 feet, and for Sunday, uh, no change. North winds 20 knots, uh, 6 to 7 foot seas here for Cook Inlet. 25 knot winds, good for small craft advisories or Ka uh, Kamishak Bay. Barren Islands coming down to 20 knots from the north and the north Gulf Coast. And Prince William Sound all northeast at 20 with seas 3 to 4 feet. And for uh, Kodiak Island tomorrow, uh, north 30 here with higher gusts fishing in the morning there on the east side. 20 knots, Shelikoff Strait, and then small craft advisors for northwest 25, Sitkanek to Castle Cape. Otherwise, the Alaska Peninsula, lighter north to northwest at 15 with 3 to 4 foot seas, north 15 for Bristol Bay. North 20, pick it up a little for Bristol Bay on Sunday with 4 foot seas, and north to northeast, 15 knots for the Alaska Peninsula. Castle Cape to Sitkanek, north 20 knots, that's uh, good right up through Shelikoff Strait. Lighter winds on the east side of Kodiak Island there with uh, north winds of 15 seas, down to 4 feet. 
On Alaska Island, uh, east to southeast 10 to 15, and more of a 20 to 25 knot southeast wind from Winmac Island, especially over toward Nikolsky. Uh, minimum gales, southern or south side of the central Aleutians here, Pacific side, 35 knot wind southeast. 35 knots southeast extends over to Amchitka Island, then swinging around to the west at 15 for the far western zone. And uh, more uniform on Sunday, east 30 knots from Shumianatu all the way and then coming down to 20 knots, but still from the east for the central Aleutians. And then east turn, uh, east northeast, 10 to 15 for the Fox Islands. Southwest coast tomorrow, north winds, 10 to 15 knots, not too bad, seas 3 to 4 feet, east 15 for the Perbloff, southeast 15 for St. Matthew Island, east 20, St. Lawrence Island, Norton Sound, northeast at 15. And for Sunday, northeast 15 continues, Norton Sound, north 10 for St. Lawrence Island, pick it up to 15 as you get down toward Nunavak Island, south of Nunavak Island, north 20, turn northeast 20 for the Perbloffs, and east of 15 for St. Matthew Island. Uh, Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, that's where it'll be the windiest. Northeast, 25 knots tomorrow, falling back to 20 knots on the east side. Central Coast, northeast 15. Light easterlies on the west side at 10 knots. And then Cape Beaufort down to Wales, northeast 10 to 15 knots. And then more of a squirrely lighter wind pattern here, kind of variable to 10. But northwest for the Chuck CC. Uh, east side here, east at 10, northwest 10 on the central coast. And then west and northwest 15 to 20 for the east side. And for tonight, again, uh, we've got this uh, frontal boundary here. It's trying to push southward, but really breaking up here, and the precipitation dying off, the bulk of the moisture shifting into Canada and down to the southeast, rain in over the northern panhandle. Flood warnings out uh, until midnight, or no, until midday tomorrow, Saturday, for the uh, Good Pasture, Chena, and uh, Salsa Rivers, and a flood watch out for the Alaska Range uh, for tonight. Otherwise, clear and windy, breezy here, south central Alaska. And another sunny, warm day for Kodiak Island, southern Alaska. More sunshine over the central and eastern interior. And then for Sunday, this uh, system and rain exits the southeast coast. Sunny and nice over much of interior Alaska. Have a great weekend. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.